Hi guys, uh, this is uh, KP from InvestorWise. Uh, hope all of you are doing good. Uh, so I got a lot of uh, requests in the past couple of uh, weeks uh, to make a video on how properly we can uh, diversify our funds when we are doing equity investing. Or uh, in totality, how do you do proper diversification of uh, money when you are uh, investing out of your surplus funds or out of your savings. So uh, uh, listen to this video carefully guys. There's a lot of learning coming in and uh, you have to implement this uh, over a long period of time in your investment style and strategy uh, to get the maximum benefits out of your investments. So uh, guys, uh, let us uh, say uh, you uh, uh, take one example that we have a person who is uh, in the age group of 30 to uh, 32 and uh, this person is uh, having good stable income maybe you are salaried or uh, maybe uh, you have a business which generates uh, stable income for you and uh, you want to do some investments now so let's say you come to me and uh, let's assume a hypothetical situation where you come to me and tell me okay uh, uh, mr kp i want to put uh, 20 lakhs in equity markets and uh, how do you think I should invest this money in uh, equity markets? So as an investment advisor, the first thing that I got to ask you is how much uh, is the total savings that you're looking to invest in the market? And you say, yeah, uh, as I told you, 20 lakhs, that is the total money available with me at this point of time. So the first thing, guys, is that you uh, would have heard this when we say you don't put all your eggs in one basket same ways you don't put all your money in one asset class so if you have a total savings of 20 lakhs the first thing i got to do is to make sure that you don't put entire 20 lakhs in equity that's very very important to understand no matter how risk aggressive you are but it is important to put your money across various asset classes like for a 30 year old person with a stable income uh, you have a lot of uh, more years to work and uh, your income seems to be stable you don't uh, have any immediate emergency or requirement of money i may allot 60 to 65 or maybe a max of 70 percent of your money in equity assuming that you are risk aggressive that is the bracket in which the maximum i will invest in equity 60 to 65 percent or on a higher side 70 percent but obviously not more than that now uh, that means the remaining 30 percent has to go in other asset classes for other asset classes, I can give you recommendations. Maybe you can go for a mutual fund hybrid scheme. When I say mutual fund hybrid scheme, it is uh, a scheme where mutual funds will put your money in equity, plus they will put some money in debt instruments also. I always say this, when you put your money in debt securities, the advantage of debt securities is that your money will generate some stable return, which comes in the form of interest income. So debt, uh, or hybrid uh, I mean debt or fixed income securities will work as, as an insurance for your equity portfolio because we all know equity returns are uncertain yes they can be very high but then we know equity returns are uncertain they might be very high or they might be very low also and they can be negative also so in that case I would probably pick up a mutual fund SIP scheme where I am generating a fixed income from the debt securities and I'm also keeping some money in equity for giving me a little push in my returns. So on an average hybrid instruments, if they do good investments, they can generate a return anywhere between 12 to 15%. Apart from that, I will also ask you to put some money in gold. You can go for gold uh, bonds or you can even go for gold ETF. At the same time, you can also go for buying gold jewelry or you can buy gold biscuits also okay now when you buy gold uh, if you if you if the invest, if the idea is just to invest in gold uh, then it's recommended that you buy gold biscuits the 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 pure gold biscuits because in that case you don't suffer the making charges okay all these are practical things guys so at any point of time if in future you need money you will sell your gold and you will realize the cash from it so i'll ask you to put your money in uh, I'm talking about the balance 30% first. We'll put some money in gold. We'll put some money in hybrid instruments in SIP uh, scheme of a mutual fund. We'll put some money in PPF or maybe a simple bank fixed deposits we can do. Apart from that, you can also keep some liquid cash in hand for meeting some emergency which might come in a future day. 
and apart from that i will make sure that i have my insurance in place when i talk about insurance a normal life insurance policy is required which is a very important thing we can't undermine the importance of it apart from that guys it's very very important that you have a term insurance policy for yourself i can't over explain about term insurance policy in this video but a term insurance policy is must for uh, uh, for this kind of uh, environment in which we are living now because uncertainty is very high and uh, apart from that a medic claim not just for yourself but for your spouse your kids and for your dependent parents you got to get a good medic claim done for them this is how i will segregate the money with the balance of 30 35% so you say okay i understood so let's say 20 lakhs is my total money 60% of it okay let's start with equity which means i'll keep aside 12 lakhs maybe for equity and the balance i will be investing in other asset classes understood okay now with this 12 lakhs you are also a chartered accountant let's assume that and you have some knowledge about the equity markets so you come to me and tell me okay kp what i'm thinking is uh, the stock of maruti let's say we talk about the stock of maruti the stock of maruti uh, was trading at 10000 uh, 6 to 8 months back and today the same stock is available for 5700 okay which means you almost get a discount of 43% on that so you say kp what i'm planning is i'll buy 12 lakhs worth of maruti stocks because maruti in mid segment cars is doing very good business and i expect that uh, this particular script will give me very good returns so is it a good idea to put 12 lakhs in one script i would say certainly maruti is a very good script but then putting entire 12 lakhs in maruti is not at all a great idea because as i started with my video you don't uh, put all your eggs in the same basket so you can't uh, invest all your money in one script no matter how good that script is whether we talk about maruti or we talk about bajaj finserve or we talk about any other script for that matter same ways uh, the idea is in equity if you are putting money you can't put all your money in one script because you cannot the, you cannot guarantee that that particular script is definitely going to go up you need to neutralize your risk to a large extent and one way to neutralize risk is by putting your money across different assets or different equity scripts within equity itself so you say okay uh, let's do one thing we'll not put all the money in uh, maruti what we will do is we'll put 50 percent in maruti and the balance 50 percent we will put in castrol india okay i ask you why do you want to buy a stock like castrol india and you come up with a reason that castrol is a very high dividend paying stock so let us have one stock where we can generate very good capital appreciation and one stock where we are going to get good dividends idea is very good but again if i talk purely from diversification point of view this does not seem to be a great idea so you ask me why the answer is very simple guys castrol is uh, a company you need to understand business models guys castrol is a company which is involved in uh, de developing this lubricant which is called as mobile and this mobile is used in cars for proper functioning of the engine now you need to understand if at all the demand for cars is going down or if there is any macro or microeconomic factor which is impacting the demand for cars then it will also have impact on the castrol uh, stock because demand for castrol products will also go down if there is a dem demand for cars going down so again this is not a proper diversification guys okay then what else can be done can we put the money in maruti and excite okay again excite is a listed company but again you need to understand what is the business model for excite excite is involved in manufacturing batteries for cars or other auto vehicles again the same logic will apply if the demand for cars is going down or if the stocks of auto sector are going down then stocks of excite industry uh, the stock of excite industry also will suffer in such cases so i won't still consider it a, as a good diversification of your money uh, okay let's forget about auto sector you come and tell me i'll not put money in auto sector i'll try to try to diversify it in some other sectors okay tell me what combination would you go for you say okay what i'll do is i'll buy few shares of ppcl few shares of cn india few shares of asian paints and uh, maybe few shares of uh, uh, interglobe aviation now i have four stocks with 12 lakhs capital this looks a very good diversification isn't it the answer is no this is still not a great diversification because in this case what you're going to do is you're going to have too much of exposure to crude oil prices yes you heard me right because if crude if you see all these stocks asian paint 
uh, in the development of the paint crude oil is uh, in some or the other way used as a raw material in see it companies involved in manufacturing of tires again tire industry is dependent on uh, the, kind, the rubber which they use in manufacturing of tires for, for that also one of the in uh, one of the raw materials is crude oil airlines uh, are heavily dependent on crude oil that is one of the important uh, raw material uh, that is one of the important uh, inputs for them and uh, BPCL again you understand their business is where they take crude oil they do the uh, refinement of it and then they uh, develop diesel or petrol from it so if again you look at it your portfolio looks good because you have four stocks in it but overall if you see you are still having all these stocks which have a very high exposure to crude prices if crude prices go up probably all these stocks will come down even if they belong to different sectors so you are now feeling sick and tired of this because from all angles you are thinking about it but you still feel that you are not getting that proper diversification if you again remove it okay and i'm just trying to add variety to it you say okay i'll do one thing i'll buy few shares of infosys few shares of hcl tech few shares of uh, uh, let's say lupin and few shares of glenmark is this a good portfolio so you have picked up two stocks from uh, pharma sector and a couple of stocks you have picked up from uh, the uh, it sector is this a good portfolio answer is still not a yes why because as far as pharma sector is concerned and the it sector is concerned both these sectors generate most of their revenues from the uh, exports and if dollar depreciates against rupee that is the currency impact we are talking about if dollar depreciates against rupee both the sectors will suffer on their profits and both these stocks both the sector stocks are expected to go down if there is appreciation of rupee against dollar which again means if dollar is depreciating in the market it sector and pharma sector stocks will be under pressure so in nutshell what i am trying to tell you is there are large number of factors guys which you need to consider when developing a portfolio and you have to create a portfolio which is in itself a natural hedge when we say why should you not put all your money in one stock the main idea is to enjoy the diversification benefit but diversification does not only mean to have too many shares in your portfolio diversification means the stocks which you have in your portfolio should not be impacted by the same factors that is the idea and for that you need to look at large number of macroeconomic factors which have a large impact on the stocks which you are holding in your portfolio like i gave you example whether we talk about crude oil or we talk about the currency uh, the currency impact or we talk about the demand of a particular product which for which the stock you have picked up so the idea is when you are buying shares guys as i keep telling you time and again there are large number of factors which have to be considered and large number of things have to go correctly for you so as to make good returns from equity equity can generate very good returns but the idea is to do it properly only then you can generate those returns see at the end of the day it becomes a game of probability and to increase the probability of generating positive returns lot of factors have to be taken into consideration so when we at investorwise tell you this that we consider 35 plus different parameters before recommending a share to you it's not just a style statement or you know it's not a gimmick kind of a thing you indeed have to consider the entire so stocks uh, it's uh, in itself is a science and you need to understand this art in a best possible way so as to derive the maximum benefit from the uh, scripts which you're holding in your portfolio too much of exposure in any particular sector is not recommended you have to do proper diversification where stocks should not have too much of correlation when i say correlation i'm talking about positive correlation which means if one stock goes up the other will also go up and if one stock goes down the other will also go down any day i will prefer in my portfolio two stocks going up one going down rather than three stocks all going up or all going down because i am increasing my risk in that case i might end up making lot of returns if all three stocks go up but then you have to look at the negative side also if all three stocks go down you end up suffering lot of losses also so uh there can be lot of examples where a proper portfolio is constructed but let's say one example would be like this maybe i will pick up one share from fmcg sector uh which can be uh, itc which can be dabur which can be britannia any of these sector uh, stocks i can pick up one uh, one stock i can pick up from the banking sector 
uh, again i have told this in my last video on banking stocks you can't pick up a stock from banking sector one from housing finance companies one from the nbfc sector no again you are having too much exposure in the financial world you can't do that so maybe one one stock i'll pick up from the banking sector maybe one stock i'll pick up from the uh, oil sector like bpcl and maybe i'll pick up one share from the it sector and yes if need be maybe i can keep one stock from the uh, metal sector like vedanta or any other stock for that matter okay or tata steel like uh, one of my favorite counters so that diversification of your money is very important not just within equity but across various asset classes another mistake which i find people making is if they have 10 lakhs or 15 lakhs of capital they just want to put entire thing in the market at one go no that is not a great idea guys you say no sir but my money has opportunity cost so I, why should i keep that money in my bank account guys you need to understand it's not that you need money only for emergency purposes you need to understand you also need money for good opportunities in the market i see a lot of my clients also they start getting very very you know, like they are they're in a state of haste kp i am having extra funds you should send me a recommendation today itself tomorrow morning first thing we will do is buy some stocks because i don't want my money to be lying idle it's not like that you need to understand we have to wait for right times if now you understand one thing in the month of january and february if people would have squeezed out everything out of their money out of their savings and put in the market in the month of january and february in the month of march when this pandemic has happened people have seen markets correcting by almost 50% most of the stocks have shown correction of up to 40 to 50% that much of time a lot of stocks were trading very cheap but because you have utilized everything in the market so your money is blocked now and you don't even have money for investing and you're not rakesh junjunwala you're not going to take money on uh, as a borrowing and invest in equity you're not going to do that so you are only going to invest out of your uh, savings so if entire savings have already been put in the market then it becomes very difficult for you to bring in more capital in right times when you see a lot of corrections happening in the market so it's important that you hold on to some of your capital another very important thing guys to uh, keep in mind is you never invest out of your earnings you invest out of your savings earnings can be very high but what we need to see is what free cash flows are available with you if you have too many commitments one car emi is going on one housing emi is going on anybody in your family is going for a medical treatment or educational loan you have taken or for education purpose of your children you have lot of commitments you need to consider all this before considering the amount available for investment in equity yes equity has a biggest advantage compared to other asset classes that it is highly liquid any point of time you want you can take out money from equity and you can just liquidate your position and money from dmat to your bank account will transfer within 2 days things have become become very very uh, investor friendly in equity markets but then we don't want to fall into such situation because when you liquidate your position there is no guarantee that you will be exiting all these stocks in profit you might have to do panic selling and you might end up suffering a lot of losses so it's very important that you first figure out what savings are available out of those savings how much you're comfortable investing in equity then you also make sure are my insurance policies in place am i investing enough in other asset classes Yes I am doing that I am I am having some fixed deposits I am having good uh, PPF transfers for claiming deductions also under section 80C 80D you have your term insurance policy in place you have enough gold in hand then you find out how much money is now available for investment in equity yes not investing in equity is not a great idea now I am not saying that because I am an equity advisor I am not saying that but yes uh, obviously i'll give you one practical example guys once i got a client and this guy probably was from bangalore if i remember correctly this is almost like one year back this guy was around uh, 57 years of age and he has uh, disposed of one of his lands and he got some 40 lakhs from there and he wanted to become a client you can understand a client with 40 lakhs of capital will be a good uh, uh, good client to me right but trust me on this for Uh, for us in investor wise it's always about the business ethics and uh, for people who have who are working with me closely they know how much i stand to it we are not here just to make money or mint money out of this i told this guy very clearly sir you are 57 years of age after selling this piece of land you have no other source of income this is your total savings i strongly recommend not to put anything in equity no i won't even put 10% of his income in equity the the thing is he could have probably managed to put money in equity but then i don't think he will have a big enough heart to stand uh, 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 the losses which 
probably can happen in equity. I told him you keep your money in bank where you can just generate enough rental income, uh, I mean the interest income, uh, which will be enough for you to earn your bread and butter. Don't put anything in equity. So you have to, you have to look at the risk complexion of your clients also. So if your risk appetite is not great, you should not be putting money in equity. Likewise, we do equity futures and options also, and we have packages for them also. But when I, when somebody approaches me for investing in, uh, for doing futures trading, I will judge my clients before even offering them that package and I will ask them do they have enough risk appetite to do futures because futures you might end up making lakhs of rupees and you might end up suffering lakhs of rupees so you should have the courage and the appetite for absorbing that level of risk if not then it's better to stay away from that asset class uh, I think I've said a lot I hope the video was useful guys if you like it uh, then uh, leave a thumbs up and mention something in the comments you keep uh, telling me giving me ideas about what videos i should be making because every week like i'm thinking what should i speak because i should not be wasting your 20 odd minutes and uh, the video whichever i make should be useful for you but one thing is clear guys only when a lot of uh, a lot of things go hand in hand, they, they go in proper synchronization is when you can make returns from equity. Otherwise, making returns from equity becomes very, very difficult. And if you find all this is very complex for you, if you understand guys, it's great. I always tell people when they call me as, they, uh, uh, as my potential clients, I always tell them that if you, if you feel you are doing good in equity, please don't uh, subscribe to our packages because it's only for people who either don't have knowledge or don't have time. If you don't have the time, then obviously you won't be able to do justice to your portfolio. That is when you should take our services. But if you have sufficient knowledge and if you have time also to look after your portfolio, then I think it's better that you do it yours, yourself. Because I feel in India, 90% of the people feel two things. Number one, they know how to play cricket. And number two, they know how to invest in equity markets. So uh, I would say 80 to 85% of my clients come to me only after suffering huge losses in the market. So you should be a good judge of yourself, whether you can do it or not. It's not important that you first bleed in the market with four or five lakhs of losses. And only after that, you come and approach us that, okay, KP, now you please help us recover the losses. Because losing five lakh may take you two days time, but making uh, the recoveries might take you a lot of time. So that analysis has to be done very maturely and if you seriously feel you don't have time to do it then it's better that you take services from me or from anybody else does not matter and uh, i think i should stop now i'm continuously speaking i hope the video was useful guys till we meet again uh, bye bye and yes uh, very very happy that five stocks have been recommended by us in last one month and they have they have just done uh, wonderful in the market. Yes, we have been lucky with the markets going up in last one month also. But these five stocks in particular have done very good. And getting messages from random people that uh, these stocks uh, which you recommended on YouTube, uh, we have invested in it. And we made thousands of rupees with very small investment. is a great feeling, guys. Great feeling because that is the objective for us at InvestorWise. We are working day in, day out, guys, just to make one thing uh, happen. That is my clients or people in general should benefit and understand the power of equity provided it is done properly guys till we meet again bye bye god bless thank you guys thank you